So, you know, with this whole quarantine, we've been, a lot of our attention has been on digital and social. And it doesn't help when we're kind of stalking all of these athletes' movements, especially with free agency coming up on the 20th. And just a disclaimer, we're all from Toronto, we're all Toronto Raptors fans, and I can speak for myself when I say I've grown to love Serge Ibaka. Everything he does off the court and on the court. And I'm not surprised that a lot of Toronto Raptors Twitter has been kind of stalking all of his moves. So this week he posted a farewell type video on his YouTube channel um, the title was thankful for my journey and all the Toronto Raptors fans kind of went crazy like what does this mean does this mean he's gone for good to the point where he actually had to pin a comment on the video saying I recommend watching the video before jumping to conclusions with three crying of laughter faces and then he goes and follows the Lakers on Twitter so maybe Vice you can tell me are Raptors fans a little bit of stalkers or what's going on here do we have a right to freak out yes Short answer, long answer, yes. So, I like like you mentioned before, it's 2020, it's quarantine time. Everyone's at home. We got nothing to do. So, everyone's on their social media trying to figure out what the next big move is in the NBA. I do think, if we can sum up this whole situation, Serge Ibaka did it best with the crying, laughing emojis. Because I think, from my point of view, he was just looking at it like, hey, I'm thankful for my journey. I'm reminiscing about everything from the past. And um, I'm excited for the next step of my journey. But everyone's like, what oh, does that mean? He's going to the Lakers, following the Lakers on Twitter. Um, but I don't know. I think following a team on Twitter and joining them is a completely different thing. So I'm going to wait to see a couple more things. If he starts following every player on the Lakers and then starts unfollowing all the players in the Raptors, maybe we can have this discussion. But uh, for now, I ain't worried. How about you, Gary? Hey, I mean, uh, I'm not like Vice. I'm like completely worried. Uh, for, like, we, I still have PTSD from when Vince Carter left, uh, the whole Chris Bosh thing. Even when Kawhi left, too, all of that combined just – I know Ibaka might not be at the level of those players, but he still had the heart as all those players did for Toronto. So to see someone like that go and maybe even potentially losing Fred uh, Van Bleet in the same year, like it, it could be a heartbreaking summer for the Raptors. But, yeah, I, I do see some warning signs with the whole following the – uh, Lakers Twitter and all that stuff. A hundred percent. How about you, Michael? What are your thoughts? Yeah, like, I mean, you got to look at it like, okay, well, a lot of the Toronto fan base are kind of like that, you know, that stalker ex-girlfriend, kind of like what you were alluding to before, you know, you're kind of like, you're checking what they're doing and who they're talking to. Oh, they're following this person. What's that person all about? So there is that little aspect of like, okay, well, how much are we being irrational? Versus, obviously, sometimes you got to take, a, like, call a spade a spade. They're, you got to believe someone when they tell you who they are. And for me, it's like, you don't really post those types of my uh, appreciative for my journey unless you're retiring or you're making a significant change. At least that's in my mind. Um, now, so does that give me cause for pause? 100%. I'm, re I'm with Gary on that one. Um, if Abaka does go, though, he did give us some great years and some great performances. We won a championship with him on the roster. Um, there's not much that he, else that he can do. And if he's looking to go and compete immediately for a championship, with another team like the Lakers, where they certainly have a chance to go deep, the Raptors don't have that same luxury to sell him on that. So I would understand if he had to make that move that's best for his personal uh, interest as an NBA player. I agree with you. And I, I agree with all of you. You know, it's funny, like you said, stalkers and creeping your ex. Like, we couldn't do that with Kawhi last year. He was so private. It was almost like we, he ghosted us. And then 2 a.m. one day, we found out he was going to the girl he always wanted, you know. And it's kind of like that with Serge Ibaka. But like you said, he did so much for us. And even with How Hungry Are You, all of his shows, his partnership with Uninterrupted Canada, he gave us so much content. He gave us What It Do, Baby. So I think there's just so much more that we're going to miss than his encore presence. But like you said, we're lucky to have him. He gave us some great years. And for a second and fi final segment of this week on social, let's, it's still on Twitter, still, you know, fans being crazy, but let's kind of go over out to the South with Miami. So Heat Twitter has kind of been excited because Donovan Mitchell, first he was hanging out with the Miami Heat vets in the bubble, but entirety of November, he's been training in Miami as well. So now Heat Twitter is like, oh, confirmed, you know, Mitchell to Miami. What do you guys think this means? Gary, you want to tell me what you think this means? I mean, for me, at least, uh, I think a lot of athletes already, like, train wherever they need to, uh, whether it's Miami, L.A. Like, it, it's hard to, like, really pick and choose where uh, athletes are going to be. And I feel like wherever they're spending their vacation or whatever, they might be just training there alongside having fun on their vacation. 
Um, that being said, though, if I'm Donovan Mitchell and I look at the Miami Heat team and see all those guys develop, Kendrick Nunn, Jimmy Butler, mm-hmm. Tyler Harrell, looking at all those guys and see where they were and then now where they are, I mean, I'm looking at that I mean, and saying – I want some of that too. I mean, I'm, a, I'm right here with all these all-stars. I'm trying to be a superstar and trying to make it to that championship. I had a terrible loss this year, and now I'm trying to come back to the season better than ever. So maybe this could be a sign that he will be going to the Heat. Who knows? I, I'm like biased with the last segment. You know, I, I'm not worried about it too much. However, this could be a, a time where we can see a maybe better Donovan Mitchell than before. How about you, Michael? Yeah, no, honestly, I'm I'm right there with uh, I'm right there with Gary. I think he's got he's got a lot of optimism about his career, and I think he should also be thinking about where he wants to play and what he wants to do with his uh, with his career moving forward. Right? Like, I mean, since 2010, with LeBron making the decision, we've seen over the last decade players get more and more empowered to start speaking out and being like, okay, well, I'm going to go play where it's best for me. If you're not going to surround me with a winning culture, then I'm going to hightail it. And people aren't being ridiculed as much as they were for those types of same moves. But with that being said, is this just an innocuous trip to go tra- travel down to South Beach and, you know, go and just, you know, train, get some nice weather, get that stuff happening? Sure, it could be completely meaningless. But at the same time, he is in another city where part of that trip could be a five-minute conversation on the phone with, some, with a certain somebody. And that can change somebody's mind or at least put a, play, a seed of doubt in someone's mind as to whether they want to stay where they are, especially in Utah, where, you know, you got to got to look in the mirror and say, OK, what can they do to improve this team to make a deeper run, considering the type of um, battle that they had in the first round against the Nuggets this year? And then on top of it, obviously, Mitchell putting on that crazy performance. Like we're, we're looking at some historical type of performances there. If he goes and makes a move over to Miami, I wouldn't blame him. But uh, I'm kind of with Gary on this one. I, I'm not too concerned if I were uh, the Utah Jazz fans. How about you, Vice? Are you with Michael and Gary where you're not too concerned? Do you think this is just Heat fans looking too into it? Or what are your thoughts? I think I kind of agree with Gary and Michael in that um, – People will just, or they're going to work out where they want to work out. There's no harm in going to Miami and enjoying the weather uh, in your off season. But if there's one thing I will say about the Miami Heat organization, it's <laughs> that they're really good at recruiting players. Uh, that's their bread and butter. Um, I remember Dwayne Wade was on JJ Reddick's podcast and brought up the fact that Donovan Mitchell was the one young player in the league that reminded him most of himself. So I can understand Donovan Mitchell, especially after having, like Michael said, that amazing performance in this year's playoffs, to lose in the first round. And then to go and see what a culture is like in Miami with Jimmy Butler and Tyler Hero and all these young kids and Pat Riley and Harris Bolstra. And I could see him being wooed by that. So I'm not going to say it's something, but I feel like it ain't nothing. We'll see. I I like that take. And I agree with you all, but I kind of want to pull away myself because, like you said, not only did he suffer that that really bad loss, but the whole, you know, with COVID and Rudy Gobert, like – there was kind of a lot of tension on that team. So maybe he's just looking for something new and a new leader. And I think it kind of means more than just somewhere to train. We see mostly these guys will go to LA to train or their home. So I don't think Miami was just, oh, I want to enjoy the weather. I think there was some strategy behind there. But that's it for this week on social. And guys, always NBA Twitter is popping right now. You know, free agency next week, the draft next week. So if you're always looking for some NBA tea, tune into NBA Twitter. 